Hey guys, this is just going to be a quick video uh, on the first sysadmin type tasks that you're going to do on your system. Those are installing uh, security and software updates on your system. There's a graphical tool to do this in Ubuntu, but we're just not going to talk about it or use it because uh, that's not why we're here. We're going to do this on the command line. Good. So the command you'll need is apt-get update. So apt-get is the program. Update is the command. However, we're going to get an error, and the error is, uh, you can see here, permission denied. That's what you see when you don't have uh, root permissions. So root is right here. Are you root? It's pretty helpful. Um, root is the super user on Linux. A super user is what it's called on Windows. It's like the god user account. Root can do everything. It can read any file, create anything, delete anything on the system. Obviously protecting root is incredibly important for security and for like not accidentally blowing away your system by mistake. So we need to be able to do some things as root, like updating our system. Any changes that can be made to the system generally can only be made by root. One of the things you need to do, obviously, in the scope of your work as sysadmin is do a lot of stuff that requires root powers. We want to use that sparingly at first, um, and the way we do it on Ubuntu is sudo super user do. So you're doing something as the super user or root. If you just prepend any command with this, the command instead of being executed by the user you are, will be executed as root, presuming that you have pseudo powers. Now in Ubuntu that's not a problem because the first user that's created by default when you're installing Ubuntu has pseudo powers. So if you just installed it and created a user, that user can do pseudo. You'll be prompted for your password, obviously to keep people who are just quickly using your account from modifying your system. But uh, all you gotta do is type sudo apt-get update, bang, and that will go out and fetch the uh, it'll hit up every repository of software that you've got, um, that you're sort of subscribed to, and check what the latest versions of all the binaries are of all the software. Once that's done, to actually upgrade your system, you use the same command, apt-get, but with a different argument, upgrade. So instead of update, upgrade. Now, I'm not gonna actually do this because you can see there's a tremendous amount, this is like just part of the list that it wants uh, to update. I'm not going to do that right now, so I'm just going to hit N. If you hit Y, and I think you should hit Y on your own system, um, that'll just update all the software it finds. Uh, just as a side note, if you're used to this from Windows, this actually doesn't just update like system binaries, so not just Linux software. It updates all the software that's installed on your system that you've installed through apt-get. Um, so installing something new, you do... Uh, wow, and I'm already forgetting, right? Have to get install, fairly obvious, and then the name of the software you'd like to install. What we're going to do is we're going to practice finding something that we want to install and then installing it. So to find something, we're using the same apt cache search and then the name of whatever you want to find. I know that I want Tmux. It's a terminal multiplexer. We'll talk about what that is and why it's awesome later on. Okay, so it found this thing. If I just search for like something more general, like editor, you can see it finds a million things, all that either have editor in the name or in the description. But since we found um, tmux, we're gonna apt get install tmux. So sudo to become root, to have the power to do this, apt get, which is the command, Install is the argument you want to do, is, hey dude, I want to install, and then the second argument is tmux, the name of the software you want to install. You can actually add an arbitrary number of things, so you can do this um, to install many things at the same time, but we don't need to do that right now. Okay, so this just gives us a heads up, and it automatically starts installing if that's the only thing that will be installed 
is the thing we asked for. If that thing requires other software to be installed that it depends on first, it'll ask you, hey, are you sure you want to install this whole chunk of software? Because the thing you want depends on these three other things, and those things depend on three other things. So this just gives you a really good overview of how the process generally works. Just a couple of details about what this is actually doing. Um, uh, I think it's... Yeah, so if we just read this out, this is the list of things that you are um, you're updating. So this is the list of the servers where you're going to say, hey, what's up, do you guys have any new software? Like, am I outdated? What's the deal? Um, this is where you download your software lists. These are called repositories. So these are repositories of software. So this is like the server address and what you're asking for generally over HTTP and this is what you're looking at inside of that repository and this is just like what you're subscribed to um, so for example just to clarify that sorry this is like we're subscribed to like also restricted software and main so this is the main which is everyone subscribed to it but we also added asked for um, restricted drivers for like playing mp3s and flash video and stuff like that so this is just a list of the things in there that we're interested in getting the state of all the software versions for. Good. So I hope you're not confused. Again, this is really just a couple of commands. We've got apt-get, and then we're using it with update, upgrade to actually do the updates, install to install stuff, remove to uninstall stuff, and apt cache search to search for whatever. Wow. <laughs> I didn't think that would find anything. Okay, so there you go. That gives you just a very quick look at um, how package management is done in Ubuntu and actually in Debian, which is the Linux distribution that Ubuntu comes from. Good. Okay, um, that'll do it. Hope you had fun. And, uh, oh, there's one more thing I wanted to show you. Uh, oh, oops, another incredible game you should check out. No, the thing I wanted to show you was occasionally you're going to add software, want to install software that isn't in the repositories. So if I say, um, apt, oops. if I'm looking for Emacs, well, Emacs is here, but um, there you see. It's version 21, and I'm, like, interested in 23 or 24. So sometimes the repositories are outdated, and you want to go directly to the people who are, who are writing the software to get uh, your, your current updated version. Now, security updates are always getting pushed out, so it's not like you'll ever really have a, a terrible security problem, most likely, if you're just doing it from the repositories. But if you just want, like, some new feature that came out later than what the repository has, this can be useful. Okay, so this is called PPAs, or I think Personal Package Archives. And so these are things that people can put these up. Again, so this is not like official an official upgrade path, but people put up software that you can add yourself. And this isn't like verified by anyone. So, you know, be sure you actually trust these people because if you're using sudo and root powers to install something like that, you can install something bad that way, just like any other uh, virus that you can get in Windows. So we're going to add this repository. Okay, and this is giving me a ton of news and blah, 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 and info. So this is, again, just telling me instructions and stuff. And this is adding an encryption key automatically for this guy so that it's at least a little more secure. Good. So we've added this repository. Now we can actually download software from it. So we're going to update our... Oops. Remember what I told you. Because I won't. Uh, so we're going to update our repositories again. So now that that's part of our repositories that we're subscribed to, we're going to just ask for updates again so we get them from there too. And then we're going to install this piece of software. Emacs is an incredible editor. Um, if you're going to do programming, I highly recommend it. I wouldn't recommend it just for like being a sysadmin, uh, unless you're interested. And then this will give you the uh, 
Oh, oh we can't even get 24. The newest, shiniest version. Here we go. So anyone that puts up one of these PPAs will generally have instructions. Um, oops. Oh, that's really strange. I didn't. Uh, I didn't copy that. So we're going to copy and paste again. There we go. And so you can see that's one place where I'm using this apt get install with like many arguments. So I'm installing multiple things. I'm installing Emacs 24. Emacs 24 EL for ELISP, which is the language that it's that it uses for scripting, and then you know some something else. I don't know what that is. Um, good. So here's a good example where you can see these are things that you didn't ask for, but that the packages you want depend on. It also says, hey, there's some suggested packages. Uh, generally, uh, like by default, um, I don't think these are installed. If you don't want recommended packages um, either, uh, you can do uh, apt get install. I think it's no recommends. I'm pretty sure. You could just look in the man page. So if you just do man apt get, bingo, you can check in there. But um, yeah, so you can see a lot of the time when you're downloading any kind of complex software and installing it, it depends on other software and other libraries. So it's rare that you'll just download the thing that you're asking for. Good, that basically covers everything I wanted. So we've covered basically installing things, removing things, all those simple updating your repositories and updating your system, but also how to install custom like your own repositories, someone else's private repositories. There you go. I think that basically gives you everything you need to install and manage and remove software on your machine.